Welcome to another episode of Becoming a Techno Wizard. And today we're going to get into um, business building once again. So I'm going to finish or continue my research plan. Doubt I'm going to finish it today. But um, let's just jump right into it, as the great Philly D says. <laughs> All right. So last time we left off on my assumptions here, going over my assumptions for you know, um, what I figure I'm trying to learn, what I might be able to learn and stuff like that. So today, I'm going to get into the rest of the objectives and goals. Um, so this is my old ones, old objectives. I might update this based on my new stuff here. But let's see what I have. So it says, um, the research project is to learn more about potential customers who are looking for ways to improve their quality of life, but I'm not sure how to do so. This is a generative study with a more open-ended approach to gathering information about the needs people have and how they currently go about solving them. By doing this research, I hope to get a clearer idea of what set of problems and customer types to focus on. Yeah, very much. <laughs> These are a few of the questions um, I wish to answer. What are some of the most difficult aspects of improving one's quality of life? How do people use the internet to improve their lot in life? And from there, I want to figure out uh, what do people search? Like, what are the what resources do people typically find online? How difficult is it to find useful resources through search? How long does it take to find actionable information? How do they know if a piece of information is accurate? What other resources online do people use for self improvement? And how will they do? Um, how well do they or don't they work? Because again, much of this I want to figure out is because it's coming from my hypothesis that yes, you can Google anything today or mostly anything or generally a lot of stuff, but it's very difficult to know what is good, right? What is accurate, you know, what is helpful um, and things like that, what is actionable and things like that uh, and irrelevant for your specific situation. And so these are the types of things I want to know as well. Next, I want to ask is, uh, what needs do people have? What needs do they have um, trouble fulfilling? So this is separate because, um, you know, people might have certain needs and you might be able to fulfill them or certain ways or be able to find things online, but certain other things they might not be able to fulfill. I think well, I probably didn't have to explain that. <laughs> How effective are the current methods of solving one's own needs? One's own needs. How do people look for resources they may, that may help them how do they know if it will help? And how do they measure success? How do people regard self-help, therapy, curated content, and so on? And uh, what does personalization mean for them? Finally, how can we humanize the experience? All right, so some added stuff that I added here, my own kind of update of this is kind of a simplified I guess it's more the objective rather than um, specific questions I ask. That's the problem with these. These are like specific questions, which is good and all, but I think it's it's nice to have this objective that I writ, written down here. So I said, um, in order to find people who can actually help with this research, a screener will need to be uh, will be needed to filter out those who need help that we cannot offer at the moment. This includes specialized or immediate needs, such as for medical help or housing or food security. Because I would love to help these folks, but uh, to be real, it's like that that's not something, you know, that I have the personal resources to help with versus, you know, how people search online and things like that. Um, I can probably help design, you know, something around that, um, at least currently. Later on, this will definitely change, but this is what I'm looking at right now. Just to set the scope, uh, we will need to find people who usually consume self-help content that need help with the following areas career help, such as finding careers rather than dead-end jobs or skill bidding um, or networking. Habit building, such as removing bad habits, creating good habits, and being consistent or persistent. And finally, community, finding and connecting with healthy, diverse, supportive communities. Ideally, a generative research study with this audience would determine how to, how to help people find relevant, actionable, high quality information based on a solid psychological foundation of behavioral change. So I hope that, you know, kind of sets the, the scope for everything. So if anything, I might, I might need to 
maybe put this at the top. Oh, that's what I forgot too. We need to get a simple research question. Simple research question, go into my assumptions around that. Or maybe I can change my assumptions around, put that in the bottom somewhere. Um, and this is like the scope of what I'm trying to figure out. And then it gets into my research questions, the type of things I want to learn. Maybe I can turn this into a research question. The research project is to learn more about potential customers who are looking for ways to improve their quality of life, but not sure how to do so. Hmm. Yeah, I could probably turn this into a my research question, I guess. Oops. Actually, let's keep that down there just in case you want to. Okay, won't well, let me undo. Let me copy this again, or rather, sorry. Instead of cutting, let me copy, put that down there. All right. Okay, so something like, How can we learn more about potential commercial? Looking for ways to improve the quality of life, but not sure how to do so. I'm not sure if that's necessarily a good research question. Maybe it should be more like a hypothesis. Like, I don't know, we'll stick with that for now. We'll look at that later. Still learning how to do good research, but you know. All right, so for methodology, many of these objectives are behavioral, thus we need observational approach to gather information. Specifically, we need to need to observe how people search for information online. I think I didn't finish this sentence here, but yeah, so contextual inquiry is one way to do this. Um, so I would you know, ask people, okay, if you're trying to learn something about you know, um, self-improvement or if you're just trying to learn something about a career or just tell me what you would do if you, you know, were in a situation, right? Um, and I would kind of observe them there. But the problem is I don't also want to prime them to do searching that they wouldn't usually do. So the trick I think I have to figure out is how do I ask people, how do I, how do I determine what people want to do, uh, what people usually do, right? When they're not being observed. Because this sort of thing is tricky too, because I'm not sure people really are consciously aware, right, of when they um, are searching for these kinds of things. Um, so maybe that, that could be another assumption I need to point out is that are, are people even aware enough about when they have, when they search for these sorts of things? I guess it's kind of the same as here. You know, make it separate. Um, because I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to say just self help. Because it could be, it could be, you know, self fulfillment type of thing, or just fulfillment in general, kind of getting idea for what your like purpose, meaning of life that sort of thing or career or, you know, practical, not, not to say that those other things are impractical, <laughs> but like, I'm not sure it's one necessary term for all of this, right? I guess, improve their lives.
that's not a good way to come from, but I rewrite this whole thing, but you know, just to get that down. Semi-structured interview. So yeah, I want to get more information on um, on basically what people do, what they're interested in doing. Try to try to get down to the detail as to why they do certain things, right? I think that's the purpose of it. That's a good use of a semi semi-structured interview, and why I would want it is because you can I could watch them do a contextual inquiry. But the problem is that I don't want to ask too many questions because that could change, you know, how they go about um, doing their searches or doing their uh, whatever they do in that in that process. And what's interesting is something like a diary study would be interesting here, which is usually not um, a good use case for it. But in this case, it could be right. Because we're trying to get down to, you know, what are the, the the deeper problems that people are having in their lives? And of course, it's going to be, oh, would they even want to share that? So, you know, it's not really sure that um, this is even a, a valid, valid uh, thing I can do. Spell diary. Close enough. <laughs> um, another one I was thinking about is like a what do you call it? A social media type of thing where you're looking at kind of like a sentiment analysis type of thing, looking at tweets or social media posts about, you know, people think, and this is more secondary research. Um, this is more, you know, just get some kind of background. Um, qualitative, but sort of quantitative because, you know, by looking at social media, of course, there's going to be some bias as to the fact that people are reporting on things that they kind of want other people to hear in some way. So it's going to be a little bit, it's going to be a little performative, but in some other ways, it's also going to be, if you get a whole bunch of these, right, if you get hundreds or even thousands of posts about this sort of thing, then you can get a, a better understanding of how people are feeling or, you know, the types of sentiments that people have around the subject. So I forgot what the term is for that, but I'm going to say sen uh, social media sentiment analysis. That's the bad way of saying it, but I'll fix it up later. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's a good start for this, you know, cyber research. And again, I don't have to do all of these. Even one of these can be very beneficial. It's better than nothing. Contextual inquiry um, or semi-structured interview or this or that, right? So my, my goal is going to be to shoot for either this or this, the semi-structured or the contextual inquiry. Um, I might even lean towards a semi-structured interview because I feel like the contextual inquiry will be a little bit tricky for me to figure out, to, to get down to what do people actually do, right? Because it's going to be difficult to ask people the questions that are not in and of itself leading, right? Versus a semi-structured interview, it could be like, um, you know, a more of a conversation type of thing, right? I can kind of turn it into a conversation so it's more organic, more fluid, and you can kind of um, more easily get down to those, uh, those feelings and those, those problems that people are having versus the contextual inquiry might be difficult to get that fluid, that real understanding of what people do. So I, I don't know, maybe I'm overthinking it. 
then participant profiles. So people that I want to interview once again. So yeah. Oh, there's my time. So I guess we'll get to it at another date. Um, 15 minutes, I'm telling you, it does, it does feel short, but we'll stick with it for now. Um, probably expand it to 20 minutes in the coming days or coming weeks. But as always, thanks for watching. And um, let me know what you think about this. You know, it's an interesting uh, <laughs> experiment. Thanks as always for watching again. Have a great day. See ya. Bye-bye.